Are we live? I'm still waiting. This is still saying that we're starting up. So are we? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is live already and we're going. Okay, I just said one, two. Okay, we are live. Hey, everybody, what is up? Ethan Hammond here. Wanted to take a little bit of your time today to go through what are the best things to have in our toolkit in order for maximizing, for managing, for reobtaining our health. Now, pretty much all of you, when you started off in life, you know, you were born and going through the first several years of your life. Uh, what is meant by several years will vary drastically for some people. For some of you, as uh, unfortunately, some of you started to become overweight and obese by the time you were five years old. No fault of your own. It was your upbringing. It wasn't necessarily your parents' fault. It's just the environment that you live in, the financial situation, what you have around you in terms of food and environment. So, for other people, it was more like you finished up with college, you were a division one athlete, you were amazing, you were strong, you were ripped, you felt sexy and incredible, and you and you were uh, just totally awesome as a human being. Then you got out of college, got out of university, and it's like, you know what, I'm just really wrecked. My body hurts too much. I can't really continue with this whole exercise thing. And so things just dwindle. And so you finished up university when you were like 22, 23, 24, and now you're 30, and holy crap, you are double the weight that you were 10 years ago. You are uh, riddled with loads of joint pain. You can't run a mile anymore when you used to be able to uh, freaking sprint a mile in five minutes flat. And so there's all these things that happen, all these factors in your life that kind of went downhill, were no longer manageable. And what we need to have is like, there's some ideas that if I can have my lifestyle working for me, then everything will just kind of naturally fall in line. Having good health, having a strong and athletic body, that's not something that has to be forced if your lifestyle is appropriate, all right? We have uh, plenty of people who work out in a very specific way, and basically they do these short form exercises. They, um, you know, 10 to 20 minutes a day on exercise. They eat really well, and they are otherwise pretty dadgum lazy very intentionally. Lazy is not the right word, but it's still the same word that we could use. Really, they are very chill. So we know people and we have clients that are really relaxed people. They're really chill people. They work out for about 10 to 20 minutes a day. They have more muscle in their body than many 20 year olds who are playing university level sports. Um, they're super relaxed. They don't suffer from any kind of pain. They eat their fill. Literally, they eat as much as they want in their uh, diet. They've done so for many, many years. They feel amazing. They will not put on body weight or they will not put on body fat. They may put on body weight if they want to, you know, increase their protein. They want to build some more muscle. Sometimes they want to go down that route. But point is that you can be fairly lazy and still be extraordinarily healthy. We all know there's people out there who are incredibly obese. They're trying to exercise and doing, maybe they're doing a few hours of cardio um, a day and they're eating, you know, less food than they should be according to their, you know, caloric numbers and whatever kind of crap, but they're still not really obtaining a healthy body. Now, we all know people who are going through a struggle like that. We all know people on that sort of journey. And why would we have these two polar opposites of people, these people who can be relatively lazy, do very small amounts of exercise, and they eat you know, they eat as much as they want of the food that they do eat and they feel amazing. They have a nice muscular body without even really trying that hard. But these other people are freaking massive. They have so much, hundreds of pounds of excess body fat on them, but they're doing hours and hours of exercise and they are restricting how much they're eating. So why are they still massive? Why are they still weak? Why are they still riddled with pain? Well, we have to understand our lifestyle needs to be geared towards what we would call parasympathy, being having a parasympathetic nervous system, excuse me while I readjust. So being parasympathetic, this is a cornerstone. Parasympathetic. This is a cornerstone of my rehab practice and how we get athletes to uh, build muscle even while they're injured, how we can get them back into their sport stronger than they were before. So for example, if I get in a client who hurt their back deadlifting, I'm going to take that person, let's say that they hurt their back doing a 200 kilo deadlift. You know, that's about 
what, 450 pounds or something crazy like that. I would love to do that. My best ever deadlift was 185, which is like mm, in pounds, I don't know, 330 or something like that. I don't really know off the top of my head, over 300. Anyways, point is that you come see me and typically what your healthcare is going to look like is you need to take plenty of rest. You need to take, probably take some pain pills, take some medication to help with the pain. You need to do some exercises, but they're going to be very low key exercises, you know, because you've hurt your back. Of course, you can't like lift a lot of weight, which is, of course, going to help you to build muscle, which will put your body into a state of healing maximally, increasing your testosterone and your human growth hormone. But really, the focus is on let's manage the pain. What we need to focus on is two P's being parasympathetic and having performance. Performance is always the goal. Having as good a performance as an athlete as we possibly can. What we don't want to focus on is pain. So how do you know you have a problem? You lack performance in very specific ways. We don't follow pain as a way of saying that we have a problem. So let's back up a little bit. Parasympathetic, what does that mean? Basically, that means you are relaxed. It's a nervous system, it's a physiology term for your nervous system, like your brain and your nervous system for how stressed or relaxed are you. When you're stressed, you are known as being sympathetic. So when you have a lot of cortisol and adrenaline going, you become sympathetic. So it has nothing to do with like caring about others. It's just a physiology term. No idea where it even comes from. It's kind of weird. When we are more on the relaxed side of the spectrum, and it is a spectrum, we say that we are parasympathetic. So that makes sense? So it's basically, this is relaxed, this is stressed. That's all that means, okay? Easy enough. If we have a lifestyle that is parasympathetic and we have a few things going, a few things in place, because remember, it's not being lazy, it's being relaxed. There's a difference there. You can be lazy and be hella stressed out. So if we want a parasympathetic lifestyle that lends itself towards performance, right? Not towards pain and not even having this idea of well i'm not in pain so things are fine no you have you don't have performance so things are not fine or you do have performance so things are fine but could still be better because hey performance is an endless um an endless game right we're always seeking better performance and if you're not aiming for that you need to that is the mindset difference that leads to success in terms of having a strong body and a strong um pain-free lifestyle Okay, so what are we looking at here? How do I get to this point of my body just kind of naturally works right? Okay, does that idea sound weird? Or does it sound reasonable? Like, hey, if, if my body is existing in as much of a way as is normal and natural what I evolved with, then things just kind of work. It doesn't have to be forced. So it's like people who are obsessed with their blood, with their blood markers, their blood numbers, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Your blood, your health should not have to be micromanaged. That's absolutely ridiculous. There's nothing on the planet aside from human beings that have this crazy idea that we have to micromanage our own health. You should have these uh, these few broad things that just kind of happen naturally and normally, and then you just have optimal health automatically, just like every other creature on the planet. You know, you don't have wolves or lions or bears or anything like that worrying about their cholesterol numbers every single other creature living thing on the planet their cells are made out of cholesterol they eat cholesterol in their own way nothing worries about cholesterol except for human beings i wonder why that is there's a lot of things to that so a lot of people they don't have this sort of lifestyle where hey we are chilled we are relaxed we are strong just by default. We have full range of motion by default. I don't have performance like I want. You know, we need to get to a point where you get up out of bed and you can do a full range of motion squat. You know, first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, you wake up, you feel decent, you feel good, and you can just go outside and go for a five kilometer run. No problem. 20 to 30 minutes, whether you're running or jogging, and you feel great. And that did nothing to harm your body. It did nothing to break you down or to lead you down the path of injury. That's the big difference we're talking about. Others of you, you'll wake up first thing in the morning, you feel like absolute crap, 
And if you were to go out and do a 5K run, you would either get injured then and there, or that would lead you down, down the path of injury if you kept doing things like that. It's inappropriate for you at that time. So what we're talking about now is how do I have these things, these strategies, these tools in the toolkit for getting myself back to this point, okay? So we have a spectrum of stress, that is sympathetic lifestyle, and uh, relaxed. We don't want to be too relaxed. Too relaxed is like you're bordering on unconscious. That makes sense. Whereas stressed, it's like you have adrenaline and cortisol like constantly flooding. You are extremely high maintenance. You cannot chill. Your heart rate is like 100 beats per minute or more at rest. Rest. It's not really rest, are you? What we want to do is come to zero. Come to this happy medium, which is where biologically you're supposed to be, generally. In my opinion, in my thoughts, what I believe, guys, is that you're, when you are stressed in the day, this is aka exercise. Ideally, exercise is your stressor for the day, period, full stop, end of statement. Capiche? Does that make sense? How many of you have a lifestyle like that where you're so chilled throughout the day and then you have this sudden big stressor, exercise, and then your exercise is done and you go back to being really chill. No, what happens to most of you out there is you wake up from a crummy night's sleep. You wake up, you feel terrible, you feel groggy as hell. You go eat a breakfast that's laden with sugar and makes your body feel stressed out regardless of how it makes you feel like emotionally or mentally. But, mm, uh, so you eat a crappy breakfast that's not fit for your species, that's not fit for a human being. You go to work, driving, not walking of course, you go to work and you're going to a place that you hate being at. You hate your job and you hate the people that you work with. You do not trust them. You do not feel safe at your job. So now you're stressed out. You go to lunch and you again have a carb loaded uh, lunch where you just, you know, you're just flooding your body in with tons and tons of sugar again for the second time, maybe the third time if you had a snack at some point in mid morning. Um, and then you go back to the job surrounded by people that you don't trust, that you don't feel safe around. Then you go home driving, of course. So how much time have you really spent walking on your feet? Practically none. And then you go back home to a family that you also don't get along with. You go back home to a family that also doesn't make you feel trust. How stressed out are you all day, every single day? You can get used to that though. Human beings, we're amazing. We will adapt to just about anything. We can adapt. We will adapt to anything. And you can get to the point of living a lifestyle like that, and it feels normal. You don't notice anymore that you're stressed because now your life is stress, right? You are sympathetic. We want to get you back towards being relaxed, okay? So we're, we're, what we're going to go through, that's basically all the faffy talk at the beginning. Now I want to go through, I did not get a issue. Can we erase this stuff? Here we go. All right. What we want to do is be able to shift our physiology, shift our biology towards uh, that zero point where we are in much more control of how we feel. All erased. You know the little powder clumps that's left behind with dry erase markers? Like, is that just a thing with all dry erase markers? Or are there some awesome brands out there that do not leave that? Because I would love that. First world problems, eh? Anyways, all right. So, what can we do? Where is my pen? There we go. No, it's a weird thing. We um, this is a dry erase marker, right? In England, they call these pens, and I found that very weird. Anyways, not important. So, what can we do to practice getting our body back to, you know, normal? We want to consider that area where we are relaxed, we are fit, we're strong, we don't have joint pain, we have full range of motion everywhere, we feel safe, we feel trusted, we feel amazing. That should be normal. That should not be an outlier, but it is. You know, 80% of Americans, you're overweight, you're obese, or you're morbidly obese, meaning you are on the way to death because of how fat you are. That's not fat phobic, that's a fact. What can we do to enhance our body's ability to be normal? Number one, we need to have a mobility practice. Now, this is my bread and butter Ooh, practice. What does this mean? It means obtaining full range of motion and strength 
through uh, four inch motion. Strength through, I am abbreviating, full strength through full range of motion. So you can move your body what is biologically, physio physiologically, a full range, such as you can squat as the grass, have full range of motion in your ankles, knees, and hips, and you feel strong. You can, you know, do something like squat, double or triple your body weight. Triple your body weight is the goal for squatting. Quadruple for deadlifting. Oh, quadruple deadlift. That's crazy. Um, but having strength through that, and I don't mean that literally like you need to be able to deadlift 300 kilos. No, it's just that you do have control over that. It's not a case of, you know, you go through, get halfway through your range of motion and suddenly like, you know, you're really weak. You can't really um, maintain flexibility through the, re the rest of your body if you're in that shape, such as like if you're down in a squat, you should also be able to reach up over your head. That's just normal. But a lot of people, they may be down in a squat and they can only reach their arms up like halfway. That's something to avoid there. Okay, so having mobility practice, this is basically just about how do I get full range of motion in my body and then how do I, you know, develop strength and stuff through that. So basically, this is not a full list, but it's something to get started with. Can you do a squat, full range of motion, and sit down there for like two or three minutes at a time? Yes or no? These are black and white. Can you do this? Yes or no? Can you get into a deadlift position? Dead. Deadlift position. So these are your body shapes. These are some of the full range body shapes, the archetypes that we examine for. Do you have a problem? Yes or no. If you can't do a full range of motion squat, you have a problem or two or three or 10. And we use that to create a quality therapy program because that's what you're aiming to fix before you have something catastrophic happen, like an ACL tear or you know, plantar fasciitis or an Achilles tendon rip or something like that. Can you do that? Yes or no? Can you go overhead with your arms? Yes or no? Can you literally take your arm straight up overhead, that bicep by your ear, or are you stuck like this? I'm looking down on my screen, which is why I kind of look like that. It should be like that. There you go. All right. Um, that's about half of the list, a little bit less than half, but can you do those things? That's an easy way to start. Can you do a squat? Yes or no. If not, let's get better at it. That's what your mobility practice is. All right. Number two, I'm just referencing my list to keep everything organized. We need to do lymphatic work. Lymph massage. And this is basically cleaning up your circulation. Look, you have a heart that pumps out blood. But what we never think about or talk about is that that blood has to return back to your heart. And there's two ways that it goes through. You know, everyone knows you have arteries and veins, right? That's actually just two thirds of the picture. You also have lymph vessels. So your arteries carry out your total blood supply out into your blood, uh, the nutritious blood. It's not just oxygenated, it's nutritious, okay? Your veins take in your red blood cells and very tiny particles in your blood, such as cholesterol, like we mentioned before. Your lymph vessels, they take up your blood plasma. So the basically the water, the watery part of blood and all the bigger, more massive components of that, such as um, excess proteins, bacteria, viruses, heavy metals, pesticides, other excessive toxic crap that might be in your food or in your, or in your environment that you're taking into your body. This is where your immune system lives. And everyone's familiar with like your tonsils and you have lymph nodes up underneath your jaw. You also have tons of them around your collarbone, around your armpits, in your belly, in your abdomen, in your groin, uh, on your inner thighs, and behind your knees. You actually have them all over the entire front half of your body, not on the back, interestingly, but those are the major areas for them. Lymph massage helps to clear out the lymph nodes. You literally jiggle them because they can become congested, and it helps your immune system to function much more appropriately. This is very simple to understand, though, guys. You can get anyone ever familiar either with yourself or with a friend who got a full body massage and the next day they felt like they had the flu. That's because you can dump out a load of toxins really quickly with this kind of massage. Fortunately, you don't need a masseuse to do this for you. Anybody, literally any human being can do a basic lymph massage all by themselves. And we'll do content specifically on that. 
But um, guys, comment below if you've ever heard of lymph massage or if you want to know more, comment lymph below. I'd be very interested in like seeing if anyone's interested. I would be interested if anyone's interested in more of a conversation about that. Sorry for the redundance, redundancy there. But yeah, super important. And it's one of the most powerful things you can do for enhancing your whole body health, your whole body range of motion for getting a handle on pain. Super, super simple. Like it's stupid how easy it is and how effective it is. Lymph massage, breath work. Oh man, breath work is so freaking important and so freaking powerful. This is one of these things. Everyone familiar with the expression, like the deeper down the rabbit hole you are, the um, longer and the harder it is to get out of the hole, right? Like the worse your mobility is typically, the longer it's going to take you to get back to that zero point, get back to normal. When you get things, when you get into a good solid practice, and once you come far enough out of the rabbit hole, maybe even completely out of it, things just kind of happen more automatically. All this stuff kind of manages itself by default. And that's what I meant earlier by saying you should not have to micromanage your health. If you do have to micromanage your, manage your health, something is drastically wrong, and we need to get a handle on that. Breath work is one of the easiest things to make normal. Here's the thing. You want to be breathing down into your belly. Yeah, that's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, there is more nuance to it than that. But basically, you want to be breathing with the entirety of your lungs. Too many of you, and some of you will get really self-conscious as I say this. You'll become really self-conscious of your breath, and suddenly you'll be like, Ooh, I need to take a breath because I haven't taken a deep breath in years or decades or you know hours or minutes. Um, most of you, you're breathing in your chest. So when you're breathing, it's going to be more like you're going when it should be going. You see how my hand moved there? And then the chest. So you're using, you're utilizing the entirety of your lungs rather than just the top third. When you are just breathing in your chest, you are, um, you're going to gear yourself towards either being stressed out by default, or you're going to become very easily stressed out. Okay. Again, there's more nuance than that, but overall, like the overarching idea, it is that simple. Breathe slow and deep into your belly. Easy, sort of. And once that becomes a habit after just a couple of weeks, all of everything else will become a hell of a lot easier, like massively easier. Number four, sunshine, guys. Sunshine. Everyone knows that we need vitamin D. Vitamin D is critical to your health. You can live with massively low levels of vitamin D for many, many years or decades. Your body will suffer. You will live through those decades, but your health will be absolutely ridiculously low. I'll go into details when we do content specifically on this stuff and vitamin D. Vitamin D is basically a hormone, though, and it changes so many things in your body. But basically, the way this works, sunshine, it hits your skin, meaning... You need to be getting sunshine on your bare naked skin, not on your clothes, not on your glasses. You know, if I'm outside and it's sunny, I often take my glasses off, especially especially as these are transition lenses. So they will go very dark and block out even more sun. I want sun in my naked eyes, on my naked skin. Even if it's cold, it could be 10 degrees Celsius, like 40, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm still going to be outside in just shorts, at least if it's sunny. If it's overcast, well... The ultraviolet light still coming down. Anyways, going off topic there. It hits your skin. You have cholesterol in your skin. What is cholesterol? Cholesterol is the precursor to all of your hormones and your cell membranes. It is the main component of cell membranes. It's like the brickwork of your house. That's like the main component of the exterior of your house. You have windows and doors and things that allow things to pass through, but the brickwork is like the bulk of the house, right? Cholesterol is the bulk of your cell membranes. Do you have to restrict your cholesterol intake? No, you do not. That'd be ridiculous. But anyways, you have free cholesterol in your skin. When it is hit by sunshine, it gets converted to vitamin D and also to testosterone and other things. Um, I have a massive amount of content that we're building up, getting ready to go on this topic because this is massive. This is huge. If you understand this stuff well, you can, just like with the breath work, you can very quickly and appropriately increase your health. Okay, so sunshine, it hits your skin. You get vitamin D and you get testosterone out of it. That's 
a win, right? So this alone is a pretty powerful list all by itself. And how easy is this to um, get a handle on? You know, start mobilizing your body, start moving through full range of motion, start doing self massage. And we'll, we'll show other drills that we can do with that stuff. Lymph massage, I'm not showing anything with that yet. We'll get more into detail, but breathe down to your belly, get some sunshine. Pretty damn easy, right? There's not a whole lot else that needs to do in there. But we're going to continue with the list just with a couple more things to make this as well rounded as possible. So, next up, oh boy, sleep. Sleep is the one that hits me the hardest. I have a, at the time of making this video, my baby is about 15 months old. I think it's 15 months tomorrow. Today, the 23rd. I'm not wearing my watch. I think today's the 23rd. It is, yeah, tomorrow, 15 months. So, my lord, she's growing. Ah, uh, don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. She's beautiful, though. Oh my God, don't get distracted. All right, stay focused. Sleep. You need to be falling asleep, meaning that you go to bed, you lay down, and you go to sleep. Not you go to bed, you lay down, you watch television for a couple of hours, and then you're on your phone for a couple of hours, and then you take a little bit longer to go to sleep when you've just missed out on like four hours of sleep. And then when you wake up, maybe for the second or third time, who knows? Uh, yeah, how many times did you have to go pee last night in your sleep? Hopefully you didn't actually pee in your sleep, but you you know what I mean. You woke up to go pee. Um, right, so sleep. I'm not going to talk a lot now because my whole purpose right now is to list this stuff out. But we'll talk about sleep. Sleep. Is your sleep good? Yes or no? You don't need a sleep tracker to tell you that, do you? Sleep trackers are a total scam. I absolutely hate sleep trackers. Did you get good quality sleep last night? You don't need a machine to tell you that. You need to wake up in the morning and be like, do you feel amazing? Do you feel like you're ready to tackle the world? Yes or no? Treat treat these answers as uh, black and white. Life isn't black and white at all by any means. You know, many shades of gray and all sorts of other colors, but um, treat the answers to this. Are you getting enough sunshine? Yes or no? Are you getting enough sleep? Yes or no? Are you breathing well? Yes or no? Do you have full range of motion? Yes or no? Period. Leave it leave it like that. Makes it makes this whole process a lot easier. Don't be like, well, it's kind of okay. No, it's yes or no to this stuff. Are you eating a proper human diet? Oh my god. God, the emotions attached to this stuff. Proper human diet. Here's another way to put it. A species-appropriate diet. I'm not going to get into details here. It's not the purpose. Fun story, though. Species-appropriate diet. The acronym for that is SAD diet. Same as standard American diet. It's just a coincidence. If you were to continue eating the way you are doing, is it possible that you could develop obesity? Because a proper human diet will never create obesity, ever. It doesn't happen. That's why any other animal in the world can eat what it is biologically evolved to eat and will eat that in any amount over any stretch of time. It will never become obese, ever, period. 80% of Americans are obese. Well, overweight, obese, morbidly obese. They do not eat a proper human diet. They do not eat, a, eat food that is appropriate for their species. And that is quite obvious, I believe. If you eat your diet that you are currently eating, is it possible? Could somebody else eat that diet and develop type 2 diabetes? If so, that is not a proper human diet. Let's just uh, shorten this up really quick. Is it possible to eat what you're eating and develop a metabolic disease? Okay, then your food is not fuel. Your food is um, something that can create sickness. That's not proper fuel. That's not a proper human diet. If it can make you sick, that's not proper. That's not appropriate. End of statement. I hope I made that pretty simple and straightforward enough. Get off the sugar. Exercise. Ooh, exercise. You know, it's eight points and we just ran out of room. We will make room. Maybe put number eight there. The rest of it is going to be really easy. Exercise. I'm really particular with this, especially because we work a lot with rehab, with getting people to be uh, stronger from having an injury. Okay, so you've injured your lower back. So how do we get you back to your sport feeling stronger than you were before? Because you, if you go through normal uh, therapy routes, most therapists, they work with you on the pain. So you spend who knows how many weeks or months getting out of pain, and then you have to rebuild yourself. I'd rather just simply rebuild you then and there from literally the moment you strain something or you tore a ligament um, or you uh, pulled your lower back, something happened. And we want you to be exercising for your rehab, but it needs to be appropriate. So it needs to be appropriate. 
it needs to be high intensity. Who? High intensity exercise when you have back pain? Yes, you can do that in an appropriate way. It's really cool. We'll talk about that later. And low volumes. Like, come on, guys, get off the two hours of cardio. That is not healthy for you. You are maintaining and sustaining a fight or flight response. That means when you exercise, you stimulate adrenaline. Adrenaline is not meant to be sustained. My personal rule of thumb on exercise is in general, most of the time, especially if it's continuous movement, like not broken up with a lot of breaks, 20 minutes or less, period. The way I do most of my strength training exercise, there's lots of two minute breaks broken up and it typically takes me about 35 minutes to get through. So if you take out the rest, it's more like 15 minutes or so. So about half my exercise time spent resting. Uh, that's important. So we want to have have it where we have this big spike of stress, give your body something to adapt to, and then come off of it. You're not spending three hours on the bike because you're burning calories. We're not talking about burning calories. We're talking about creating a hormonal response. We want, adre we want adrenaline and cortisol to go down as much as possible, as frequently as possible. And we want testosterone and human growth hormone to be maximized as much as possible. The sleep plays heavily with that. The proper human diet plays heavily with that. If your diet does not give you great levels of hormones like testosterone and human growth hormone and things like that, it's not a proper human, human diet, in my opinion. All right, number eight, last bit is relationships. Remember at the start of this video, I was talking about how, you know, if you have a lifestyle where you have a job that you hate surrounded by people you don't trust, you have very poor relationships. And if your family is the same way, you have very poor relationships. If your friends are the same way, you have very poor relationships because this perpetuates a bit of a complex. You have friends and or family or workmates and human beings who are a social species. Did I just mark my shirt? Yes, I did. You gotta be careful with these things. You um we're at 30 minutes now. You're ready. Um human beings were social, right? Like we have a hormone called oxytocin whose presence in our body, when it spikes, it helps you to develop bonds with quite literally anyone that you're immediately around and interacting with. There's a lot of nuance there too. Oxytocin is amazing, by the way. If you guys have never looked into it, you should look into like the tests that have been done with like giving people nasal sprays of oxytocin and then having them look at um, like pictures of people and developing bonds with people that they don't know. It's really freaking cool. Anyways, you want your relationship to make you feel loved and safe and trusted. I need those three things happening all at the same time. So your work needs to promote those things. So let's, can we fit this in? Surround yourself by people you trust, you love, and who make you feel safe. I think that's pretty reasonable. Like, does anyone want to try contradicting that? Like, if you have friends, they should make you feel trusted and trusting. They should make you feel loved and you should feel like you love them. And they should make you feel safe. You shouldn't feel stressed out around the people that you're with. Easy. All right. Eight things. Easy, quick, simple, effective, massively effective. Any questions? If there are any questions, please let me know below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. That's everything though. So what I want to start doing is go through how do we capitalize on all of this? So let's go through. Uh, so basic mobility, work, limb, work, et cetera. And how do we make these things, you know, as good as possible, as appropriate as possible? That makes sense to everybody. All right. Love you all and see you all later as we delve into this in a lot more detail. Bye, guys.